welcome. This is Melissa Armel with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing the week of the expiration of January 28th, 2022 beginner trader results. This is for the Gap Options newsletter. This is the options tracking for this week trades that I call it expire the 28th of January. We had an 89% win ratio for this week. So if you're a beginner, I'm using an average risk of around 1,000. I will review this here. I'm trying to do this even though this is a lot of work um, with the charts and everything in here, just so people can follow along and see kind of what we're doing here and if they think they may wanna join and start to trade options. Again, all these trades were way, way past back in January. So these are not trades for people to be doing right now. I'm showing you here the results that you can get if you wanna sign up for the newsletter and you want to join. And again, if you have a a varied risk, you can risk less than a thousand, you can risk more than a thousand. It's the idea of showing what's possible and then obviously showing all the newsletters that I called this particular week. That if you had been a member, what you could have gotten out of it by trading these trades. If you want to watch me on TV, I'm pretty much everywhere. So <laughs> just follow me on YouTube and I post my clips. You can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929 gap You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So everything I do is based on my Golden Gap rating system. It is one system that I use to trade the overall market. You can use it for options trading, swing trading, or day trading. So what I'm reviewing here is the options newsletter. So the options newsletter is a service that's emailed to you, that trades are emailed to you in live time. So let's talk about this specific week. If this is a subscription service, if you want to sign up, you just email me if you want to sign up uh, for this week of January 28th. Again, win ratio was 89%. There were eight winners, zero break-evens, one loser, and nine trades. So with an average of about 1,000 per trade, beginner trader risk was 9,360, okay? Beginner trader profit, 16,290 and return an investment 174%. So again, there was one loser, eight winners. Every single time you take a trade, you have to size your risk close to the, as equal as you can. And it's the idea of consistency with the risk, but also consistency with profits. Either way, you can't risk more than you can afford to lose. And you have to be thoughtful about the risk that you take based on your cash, your cash amount. I teach a class once a month. If you're interested, you can email me. The class for March is the end of March, March 26th and 27th. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. I am teaching this class only on Saturdays and Sundays. And again, this is Eastern Time Zone. I'm in New York. This is where you will learn the strategy. How am I making the picks? Uh, that is, I think, important because people really should understand what they're doing before they risk money. And again, the longer I teach, I've been teaching now for 10 years, the longer I teach the more I realize how people don't understand what they're doing, risk money all the time not knowing what to do, and they don't have a clue what they're doing. I, 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 I really don't understand why people do that, but they do. I guess part of it is the gambling mentality. They just gamble and think they're going to make money doing that, but it's really not a good idea, to be honest with you. If you want to sign up for the newsletter subscription, again, that's what we're going to go over here that week of the 28th. 12 month subscription is $69.99. Six month subscription is $49.99. The trades are emailed to you. If you're interested, email me at melissathestockswish.com to register and you can sign up and get started on Monday if you want. So let's talk about the week of expiration, January 28th. Okay, so I called Wednesday the 19th of spot. Strike was 452, expiration was 128. Called a put. Okay, so a put is a short. Usually the trades are in the morning pretty early. This was still in the morning, 10.51 a.m. Again, this was a Wednesday. It's interesting looking at the cost of these now versus uh, back in January, which I'll talk about later. But cost was 470. Two contracts, again, with an average risk of 1,940. You could take two, okay? Sold $25, profit 4,060, return on investment 432%. So let's say look at it. So 119. 119, 452 puts. Eighteen, nineteen. here was the 19th. So take it over. So I called this, well, I called this a little bit later. It's 10 something. So this was starting to go and then I called it probably right at the striker, right underneath it, whatever time that hit. And then boom, 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 boom. See this? 
So again, when you're trading, and in this case, remember, we're doing a put, you want to get out into the momentum, into the momentum. That's another mistake a lot of people make too. They make this with day trading options, everything they do. They get out when it goes against them, particularly options because of volatility and the way an options train, chain works, okay? You really got to get out when it's going, mm. And that's why you can watch it, watch it, watch it. You can bar by bar it. You can throw an order out there. But again, once something reverses, which this did, the trade still would have been up huge here actually, because because again, even the close on this day, look at where it was, take it over, was at 440. And this was the 452, but, but if you want a good exit, you would want to get out into the drop. Like even here would have been a good exit. But again, this is the drop here where it really pays you. It gapped down this day. So it closed here, gapped down, fell, and, and and again, take it all the way over where this was, 420. It's crazy. That was a really nice call. That was a really nice call. So again, I say no piggy targets, but this was going in your favor every day. Every day was red from the time I called it. It was a, it was a really nice call. Feels like a long time ago, but I mean, look what the market's been doing since then. So then Friday the 21st, I sent this out at 8.15 in the morning. So you get a trade in the morning before in the pre-market, what do you do? Get ready to get organized, to get ready to go. You can't do trades in the pre-market. You can only do trades after 9.30. So the strike was 400, expiring, expiring 128. This was the day that Netflix had the earnings. I had reviewed this on a previous week. Um, so this was out to the 28th, but this was the morning of the actual earnings, which I, I still called the puts because I knew it would still drop and it did. So let's take a look at this one. This wasn't cheap. You could have gotten one. Now, if you didn't want to do one, fine. You know, again, it was a little bit more than a thousand, 1400, but that's what it was. What you could have done is you could have done one farther away too. You could have done that too. Sold $45, profit 3100. Return on investment, 221%. Again, the gap down then on the 24th, let's look Let's look at the chart. So again, this was the day, of, so the earnings were at night. Boom, gap down, called the put in the pre-market, saw this would work in the pre-market. Again, an hour and a half before the open, I'm very good at determining very early what's gonna do. Sometimes I get up in the morning at 7 a.m., 6 a.m., 5.30, and I, I can see what the market's gonna do that day. I can send trains out very early, but you can't do them till the open. Anyways, this got the drop, boom, boom, boom. Mm. This was Friday, this was Monday, boom. Again, take it over, dropped into 340. Again, this was, you know, this was a nice trade. It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't crazy. But again, we were talking about going with the momentum, get the drop, boom, mm. So on the live day here, this close to your gap down, this was red. Before it flipped, it was red. And again, you're up. And if you don't have time to watch these things, you know, just put an order out to fill you at 100% or 75% or something. If you can't watch, now I do have the targets in the letter, but if you really can't watch, then put a sell order. It's a cancel day order to fill you when it's done. That was another nice call. Now I did also call then a few minutes after the open, I called the uh, lower strike once I saw this thing was going same expiration date, January 28th puts 390 strike, okay? This was, again, sometimes I'll, I'll stack them. So you could have done both, you could have done one, you could have done both. This was slightly cheaper. Cost is $11, one contract, risk $1,135. Profit 2,400, return on investment 218%. So again, this was that same day saw where it was breaking, called a second one. And again, you know, if you only wanted to do one, you could have, but anyways, they both worked. Drop, 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 boom. And again, down here's the volume. So sometimes if I really love something, I'll call a couple. I just did a video on BA tonight. Same thing, like, you know, sometimes I'll call a few BA strikes. We've been, we've been doing that that way. Sometimes I'll do that with the market. If I absolutely, absolutely love something and I see it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going, again, you could do them all, you could do one, you could split them up, do one, get out of one, hold the other, and then, of course, the prices vary, too. 
Then we did the QQQs. Again, on that Friday, which was the day that Netflix gapped down and their earnings of the market gapped down too. Remember, Netflix isn't with the Qs. It affected it. 9.45, slightly after the open, I called the 3.58 puts in the Qs. 6.50, two contracts who could have risked $1,300, sold at 20. Profit, 2,700. Return on investment, 208%. So let's look at the market. So the 358s, again, this is here. So this was the day, and I don't remember if there was another reason the market was down that day, if it was just because of Netflix. I really honestly don't remember. It's too long ago. But I know we got down. So we closed here, gap down, rally dropped. Gap down the next day, Monday morning, fell off a cliff, boom. Again, up here, 358, take it over. I've been calling them at the money, close to the money, maybe a little bit above. And then this got the beautiful drop over here. Gorgeous, really nice straight. So again, 208%. And you know, the, this is the, the, they started getting pricier. That's what I was trying to say before. The, 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 puts of, the puts of the money in the market have started getting pricier. This was start like towards the end of January. And actually the price has come off now a little bit I've noticed because we've been rallying. And that's, this, it's, it's a wild market. It's been a wild market. It's been fun to trade though. Now let's talk about the SPY, same thing. Then call the SPY, 440 puts expiring 128. These were 470. Two contracts cost $940, sold at 16 bucks. Profit 2,260. Return on investment 240%. That is a nice trade. Um, again, you, you can put your order out to sell it if you can't watch for targets or can't watch what's going on. And if you're not comfortable holding over the weekend, which you which you would have had to do here to get this guy going, it, it had a week to go though, really. But the fact is, if you're not comfortable, you could have got out Friday and still made money and still made money. Let's look at the chart. Again, the 440s. So this was not down as much as the Q's, but still down. Close to your gap down, fell. Close to your gap down, this is Monday morning, fell. Take it over, 420, again, up here is where I called it, near 440. Again, you could have got out of it Friday. You could have got out of it Monday morning. You could have waited to see what happened, which I did, fell. That was nice. So, you know, again, timing is important with options. In fact, we did one. Yeah, it was this past week, or no, it was two weeks ago. Was it? I forget when it was. Was it within the last week and a half or two weeks, where there was one I called the direction right, and I and, and the strike, and it went through the strike, and 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 it was it was not as profitable as I wanted it to be because I was in it a little early, a little early. Uh, so it's timing is just so critical for options, I, but it is for day trades too. Really, if you, if, you know, I'd like to be aggressive in the morning between 9.30 a.m. and 10 a.m. For, uh, for day trades. Well, and options too. But for day trades, it's important because, again, the sooner you get in, the sooner you get out. And if you're waiting, 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 you run out of time, you run out of day. I mean, if you're entering a day trade at 2 o'clock, the market closes at 4. you got to get out before 4, you know. So I like to do things where I'm getting the early entry. But it is critical with, with options because you don't want to run out of time. And you can get the direction right and, and, and run out of time still. Oh, this was the Apple one. 847 cent this Monday morning, the 24th, the 160 puts it expire 128. So this was Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. And this was 450. Two contracts, risk 900, sold 725. Profit $550. That's a decent trade. 50% is good profit. 61% return investment. And again, this was the gap down on the Monday and then the drop on the Monday. So this was the 160s. Okay, so this was here. So I, I could have actually called this Friday too, but I didn't. I didn't call this till Monday. So I saw we were gonna drop though on Monday. We did take it over, 160. Here's the drop, here's the profit. Again, this gap down fell, 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 fell. And you get out somewhere where we get out. Again, this is, you know, four, five, six dollars for the money. Profitable, out. 
And I'm calling, it's an active letter, I'm calling a decent amount of trades. Some weeks are busier than others. Some weeks are really, really busy. Some weeks are not as busy. But either way, you know, you have a trade, it goes, you book the money, chances are I'm gonna call another one the next day or the next day after that. So you really gotta be active. The idea is to book money. And this was a nice quick one. I could have called this up here though. I could have called that Friday. I didn't want to get too crazy on a Friday uh, into a weekend. Monday, then I also called the 430 spies, expired 128. This was Monday too. So remember, I had called the 440s Friday. By Monday, I also called the 430s, which you get that email and say, wait a minute, oh, that's telling me, you know, she thinks we're going to go lower, which of course we did. And I sent that at 9.45. Cost was 6.50. Two contracts, risk was 1,300, sold 12.75. Profit 1,250. Again, with an average risk of around 1,000. This is okay. It's close enough. Return on investment 96%. Does this take it? Get the drop. So the SPY, again, I had called the 440s here. Anyways, then I called the 430s on this day a little bit after the open, here's the drop. Take it over, nice drop, boom. Take it, get the drop, get out, boom. Here's the volume. And then on Monday, uh, a little bit before 10, I also called the 344 Qs. Remember I had called, what was the strike I called on Friday? 358. Then I saw we're gonna be lower Monday, then 344 as I called. 780 this was one contract this is when they this is like i said they started to go up risk was 780 sold at 12 profit 420 return on investment 54 percent 54 percent this was take it get the drop get out boom and again let's see what it did closed here gap down fell take it over 330 so here is 344 I must have called that. I must have called that into underneath the strike. What time did I do that? That's where I was pricing nine fifty four. Yeah. But anyways, that that was a nice drop. But again, that was Monday. So if something has a move on a Monday, you can get out. Does every trade go the day I call it? Absolutely not. Some trades take a couple days. Some trades, I could call it on the day. It could be down that day. It could be down the next day. And then it could go the next day. So that's why I always tell people, don't risk more than you can afford to lose. Uh, the 25th then, this was Tuesday, the 25th, 10-19. I called this by 20, uh, 428s. This one lost. Wasn't a total loss. We'll look at the chart. Seven dollars for one it was a partial loss. What happened here? Twenty fifth. Oh yeah, this was this. So here I called it. Closed here, gap down. It was the four twenty eights. This actually, this actually had profit in here if you got out this first day. Now I thought it was going to keep going. I this was only the Tuesday. Remember, I thought it was going to keep going. But anyways, it looked like it was gonna keep going and it looked like it was gonna keep going and then this is the 27th. The very last day though, it actually was not worthless. It had some value left, but it was a negative trade. It was down it. And here you can see here where it would drop below the 428, but it just didn't go enough. I was looking for it to continue. You, you would have been better off getting out of it actually the first day here. It wouldn't have been a loser. I just, thought this was going to continue right at that point this we did continue it took it took a month actually this was the 24th that was the 24th look at that so so going back here let's go back to the results overall a good week a solid week and you know, eight winners and one loser. You do have to be patient though, some days, and, and the days things go fast, of course, everybody loves that, I do too. 
but that's not all the time. That's not every week. That's not every day. And we, we have a volatile market right now. So you need to know if you're going long, if you're going short, how much you're risking, where you're getting in and where you're getting out. And you need to hold the conviction and you could be shaken up a lot if you don't hold the conviction. So it's important. And I think I tell people, if you're worried about a trade, back off your risk, you know? Um, and we just had some nice follow through in some of these weeks and, and particularly this week, which you really, really saw where then I was calling something which with such a different strike from a Friday to a Monday, which those market trades were. But the beginner trader risk overall, if you did every trade that week, was a $9,360 risk, beginner trader profits $16,290, and then return on investment 174%. So you can open up an options account with $2,000. You can't risk $1,000 a trade if you're doing that. You have to look at how much money you have and then determine how much you're going to risk. Whatever works for you, as I say. And if you don't feel comfortable being on more than one trade at a time, then only be in one trade a day until that trade goes and then you get out of it, then you do the next one. If you want to be active, though, and risk an average of $1,000 a trade, shows you what you can make in a week. You do not have to risk an advanced risk of five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. You can make money with a smaller account and a normal risk. It's just the idea of knowing what you're doing and making sure that you stick with the trade. And again, if something loses and I take it, I just write it out. I mean, it could end up just being a bust for me. And the only time I hold something to the last day is if I'm down and it never went up. Now that while that one was up that first day, I just didn't think it was up enough. But you theoretically could have even got out of that one trade with money the day I called it. If you wanna scalp stuff, that's fine. It's gonna be difficult for you to get the big movers as we have continued moves up or down. So that's something that you have to work out in your head or you can trade, scalp it at the beginning when you start and then make a decision later when you see how things are going. It's a learning process, I think, for people, even being on the newsletter. And again, if you wanna take the class, you take the class. You'll learn a lot in the class. You'll, you'll learn what I'm looking at, basically, when I'm calling the trades. But if you don't have time to do the class on the weekend and you don't want to do it, then you just sign up for the subscription. And again, the targets are on the letter. You're welcome to call and email me. If you have questions too, I make myself available to people. I have no problem with that. I want people to do well. And there are many people on the letter doing well. I've got some incredible emails from people this year about the money they're making. So it's about staying focused. I'm doing my best to stay focused. This market has been volatile and tricky. I've done my best to read it. We'll see what happens next week. If you do want to sign up, you can sign up this weekend, and as long as you sign up by Sunday, then you can get Monday's trades. Email me at melissa at if you have any questions or would like more information. Have a good day.